So, how exactly do we fix things? Chalmers laid out a plan for churches stuck in the general method, a plan he called localization. Now, the minister and elders certainly should not abandon their present members, but continue to pastor them. But at the same time, they should go possess uncultivated land. They should chalk out a new parish, preferably in the immediate vicinity of the church. Dedicate meaningful time to visiting it, even if it's only an hour per week. Jealously guard that time and plot away year after year. As the Lord blesses the work, gradually the church membership will shift towards this new locality. If you like, visualize the church in its vicinity, then each church member is a solid circle and each unbeliever is a dashed one. At the outset, everything is random. Members come from far and wide. Few, if any, live near the church, but note the unbelievers who do live near the church, so near yet so very far. If the plan is carried out consistently over the years, some of those nearby will be one to the church, if not to Christ. Other members coming from far will eventually head to glory or move on for various reasons, as is always the case. Perhaps after two generations, one might see full localization. All members are now truly parishioners, and the other parishioners are, well, increasingly outnumbered. And so we retrace our steps to the way it once was when people actually walked to church. We could also conceptualize here two churches operating on the parish plan, not scrambling for the same pool of Christians, but laboring in their own vineyards side by side, hand in hand, as Peter and Paul. Now, this is my own thinking here, not directly from Chalmers, but I don't think it's rocket science. Think of each church member at, or household living where they do as having a circle of influence. God has placed various individuals and families in their lives within their reach. They may be friends, co-workers, fellow students, extended family. If any of these live within a reasonable driving distance from the church, they are not only prime for gospel conversations, but very invitable to the services. That's straightforward. But there is a circle of influence we often overlook. Our own neighbors, our literal neighbors. Is it an accident that they live so close to us? Are not so many of the artificial boundaries between us and them just that, artificial? Can we not show them the love of Christ, speak to them about Jesus, and also invite them to church? And if even one of them should come to church and over time develop a habit, or if the Spirit mightily blessed and converted that neighbor, would that not automatically create a baby Christian community in your own neighborhood. If God blessed even more and two other households began attending your church, could that not be the very beginnings of a Bible study, a preaching station, or maybe even the nucleus of a future church plant? Let us not underestimate God. <laughs>